Yeah, everything we've been doing this week has been eight intermediate. And I'm really glad I didn't get the recording going because I didn't talk about you guys' attempt to bribe me. So that won't be on any recording anywhere. Anyways, okay. you're going to continue. The <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're in chapter 8.3, and you're right. This is the intermediate eight. Okay. And we're talking about fractional exponents, and there's an example, eight to the two thirds power. Okay, so here's the rule. And then we'll, I'll show you how it applies to this. X to the A over B is either the Bth root of X, whole quantity raised to the A power, or it's the bth root of x, whoops, raised to the a power inside. So let's take that apart so you don't kind of fall, uh, fall all over yourselves here. The denominator is always the index, always. The denominator is the index of the radical or of the root. The numerator is the actual power, okay? But you have a choice. You can put the power on the outside of the quantity, or you could put the power on the inside. It's whatever makes it seem easier for you. Now I'll show you with this example. So this becomes, I'm gonna do this two different ways. This becomes the cube root of eight because the denominator is a three, so the index is that quantity to the second power. The numerator was a two. So the cube root of eight, okay, raised to second power, or this is the cube root of eight to the second power. It doesn't matter. In the end, you will always get the same answer, okay? But one method might be easier for one problem, another form might be easier for a different problem. But let's go here. The cube root of eight, okay, is two. That's something that after a while you guys should be, should know. That's one of those things that just keep coming up so often. So this becomes two, squared. Okay, well, two squared is four, and you're done. That's the answer. So eight to the two thirds power is worth four. Or if you put the exponent inside, this is the cube root of 64. Okay, you go off to your scratch paper to work that out, 64. I didn't want to break out a whole new pin. We got one more night, please. 64 breaks down into 8 times 8, which is 4 times 2, 4 times 2. But wait, if you put that together, it's 4 times 4 times 4. So 64 is 4 to the third power. And we can say that the cube root of 4 to the third power, they cancel out we still get four. So whichever way you want to do this is strictly up to you. Okay, now let's try a sample problem. A, a more difficult sample problem. Let's say we had um, A, no, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry, I, I'm thinking about this. I want, to, I want to keep it pretty nice for a second. Um, Sixteen X to the eight, Y to the 12th raised to the three fourths power. 
Okay. I'm actually going to let you play with this for a second. Hint, distribute the power. Remember our rules of power. If you had uh, 3x quantity squared, our rules for power is said to distribute the power into each thing first to get rid of parentheses. And then use your power to a power rule. So I'm going to give you a minute to distribute the power and see if you could apply this fraction power or fraction rule to this problem here. So based upon the little hit I gave you, your first step, this should be 16 to the 3 fourths power times x to the 8 to the 3 fourths power. Remember, you're distributing this power to each thing times y to the 12 to the 3 fourths power. OK, now it turns out this is the easier thing to do. What do you do with a power raised to a power? What, what do you do when you have x to the fourth to the fifth power, a power raised to a power? You multiply them together. 4 times 5 was 20 in this case. So here, when you have a power raised to a power, okay, you go off to your scratch paper or to your calculator, and you do 8 times 3 fourths, and you get x to the 6th power. 8 multiplied by 3 fourths eventually becomes a 6. And 12, where's my glare? Okay, this is going to be bad. 12 raised to the 3 fourths becomes 9. Ouch. OK. So that, that was the easy part of the problem. Now I got to figure out what's the fourth or 16 to the 3 fourths power. OK, so I got to figure out that. I'm going to put it right in the layer. But I'm going to do my work over here. So 16. Oh, I'm going to have to break down and get a new pad. 16 to the 3 fourths is the fourth root of 16 to the third power. I personally like to put my powers on the outside, not on the inside. That is, I personally like this form of the rule, not this form. There are times when this is better, OK? You have both to choose from, but I found that in most cases, I like this one better. Because what happens if you go to your scratch paper and you figure out the fourth root of 16, the fourth root, it becomes 2 to the fourth cubed. So the fourth root of 2 to the fourth cancels out to be 2 to the third power. That 3 power just goes down. And eventually, that's just 8. So right here in the middle of the glare, I can put a big fat eight. Okay. Our exams, sorry to interrupt. Uh, um, do you need to see the work of us breaking down 16 to the third, fourth, or can we just use our calculator? You can use your calculator. Okay. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things I accept you can do. When For many years, I hated calculators. I didn't allow students to use a calculator. And then slowly, slowly, I've given up. Um, and Yes, you can do that in your head, OK? Or let your calculator do it one of the ways or another. So 16 x to the 8, y to the 12. We distributed the 3 fourths into each piece, OK? I remember that when I have a power raised to a power, I multiply them. That's how I got x to the 6, y to the 9. But 16 to the 3 fourths, OK? I came over to my scratch paper. I wrote it as the fourth root of 16. Because remember, the denominator of the exponent becomes the index. So the 3 fourths power is the fourth root. OK. Is that all right with everybody? Yes. OK. All right. Now, basically, that's it. I probably will give a problem like this on the quiz. And I'll give you more practice when we come back in two weeks or whatever like this. 
but that's an introduction to fractional exponents. This is the rule that you kind of need to know. That one right there. You have a fractional exponent, you can write it this way or this way. By the way, I should point out that all rules in math are reversible, unlike final exams, whoever asked that question. Okay, all rules are reversible. So for example, if you had this problem here where I'm pointing out and you wanted to, you could rewrite it as this problem. The index becomes the denominator, the power becomes the numerator. So all rules are reversible. You can go any direction you want on these rules. All right, well, let's look at, okay, the square root of X, just for a second. Now, I'm, I'm leading us to the next part of the lesson, okay? The square root of X. Well, we know that that's the square root of X to the first power, okay? We know that we can cheat a one in there. And like I just said, all rules are reversible. So this could be X, raised to the one over two power. X to the one half power is a different but correct way of saying the square root of X. They're the same thing. X to the one half power, square root of X is the same. Okay. What if I had X to the one third power? What root is that? Uh, cube root. Cube root, right. Okay, I'm gonna have to break down and didn't want to. Sorry. I didn't want to use another ink cartridge, but I'm gonna have to. Okay, so this becomes the cube root of X to the first, which is just a fancy cube root of X. This concept will help you a little bit in our next topic, that the one half power means the square root, the one third power means the cube root, and we could go on and on and on. The one fourth power, whoops, if I could write it right correctly, x to the one fourth power is the fourth root of x. Okay, so this is just like a special version of exponential uh, exponents, fractional exponents. Okay, now I am done officially with rational exponents. Any questions? There may or may not be questions in mom on this. We do need to know that have the knowledge. Okay. If you want some practice on it, I'll see if I can find some over the over the break. All right. I don't hear anybody yelling for more problems. So cool. Now we're going to jump to. The last topic in this chapter. This is intermediate still. This is chapter 8.6. This is we want to solve radical equations. Now, I'm going to have to put some notes on the board and then I'm going to have to erase the notes to make room for examples. Okay. 
So I'll put them up. First thing we want to do is we want to isolate the radical. So you're going to have a radical and a bunch of crud. You want to get the radical all by itself. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to power both sides. Power both sides. Third thing you're going to do is you're going to solve the new equation. Now, I need to add something to this, so I'm going to wait for you to let you catch up with your writing. Solve the new equation. Okay, because your new equation might be linear, and that means you get x alone, or your new equation might be a power equation, in which case you make equal zero, and you factor. So you have to make a decision when you follow these steps. And by the way, you got to do these in order. That's why I'm calling them first, second, third. First, you isolate the radical, whatever it is. Second, you power both sides. I'll explain that when I do a problem. Third, the new equation you solve, but you have to make the decision. Your new equation might be linear. Linear means power of one. That's what we were doing in pre-algebra. That's what we were doing in chapters one and two. We were solving linear. Your new equation might be a power equation. That's what we did in chapter six and seven, where we factored, okay? Make equal zero factor. You have to make that decision. No one can help you with that. You gotta figure that out. Now this fourth step is really critical. You need to check or the book, in fact, all math books call it extraneous solutions. Okay. Check for extraneous solutions. Check out the root word of extraneous. It's extra. Okay. It means that you might have an answer that must be rejected. And I will try tonight to show you an example of that. Okay. There's no way to get around it. This method, okay, introduces the possibility, not a guaranteed, but the possibility that some of your answers might be what are called extraneous. They don't work. They don't check. So you need to reject them, but you need to think about them, check for them. And lastly, okay, fifth, you put in solution set only answers that check. So, We're going to do a problem in a couple seconds. I'll let you write that down. So here we go. First example. Um, okay. Five 
plus the cube root of 2x minus 1 equals 2. All right. First step is isolate the radical. So we want to get rid of the 5. Minus 5, minus 5. That gives us the cube root of 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. Now, this is where I've said power both sides. What power can you use that will get rid of a cube root? Cube power. So, and that'll be different on every problem. Okay. If it was a square root problem, you'd power it by two. If it was a fourth root problem, you'd power it by four. So I can't tell you specifically what to power by. That, that is inherent in the problem, implicit there. But anyway, the cube root and the cube power wipe each other out. And so we get 2x minus 1 equals negative 27. Negative 3 to the third power, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. OK, we get negative 27. Now, this is a linear equation. It has no power to it, or actually the power is one. So this is one of those ones where you're gonna get X alone, okay? So if we do that, the only way I know to solve it is add one, add one, okay, we get two X equals uh, negative 26, divide, X is negative 13. Okay, now I'm, I'm not going to check this now, but I should check it by plugging it back into the original and see does it make the problem true. If X is negative 13 and I put it in here and do my arithmetic, Okay, does it make this side equal two? And the answer is yes, it does. So would a question that's uh, like a rejected one would be if, if example, it was a square root and the number being square rooted was a negative number? That would be an excellent way to check it, yes. Once you've got a negative under there, then that's an immediate rejection, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. The, the other one is just simply your arithmetic doesn't check out. If you if you plug this in here, let, let's actually do this. Okay, so if you plug this in, you have five plus uh, the cube root of two times negative 13 is negative 26 minus one. And we're saying, does it equal question mark two? So we plug negative 13 in for X, 2 times negative 13 is negative 26. So this is 5 plus the cube root of negative 27. Does it equal question mark 2? The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Remember that? We talked about the first night. I'm not sure you guys have gotten to do any homework yet or much of it. But the cube root of a negative number is always negative. Okay, so this is 5 plus, it turns out to be negative three, your calculator might do that for you. Does it equal two? Yes. So in this case, it checked. But Carmen, to answer your question, what if this had, what if for some reason, this had been a plus three? Then you'd have five plus three, which is eight. Your arithmetic failed because eight doesn't equal two. So that would be another reason to reject it just simply because of your arithmetic, okay? So okay. You, hit, you hit on one thing, it just rejected because you can't have a negative inside of a square root. That's a good way to reject it. This is another way, just the simple arithmetic also causes it to reject, okay?
So anyway, I went through the uh, went through the work. So it does check, yes. So we slap it in solution set and we say I'm done. Yay, that's it. Okay, that's a pretty basic problem. Any questions on that one? When you plugged um, negative thirteen back in. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, never mind. Uh, oh, I see it. Never mind. <laughs> okay, cool. Anybody else? So I, I want to erase these words, these steps here, so I can do another problem here. Okay, does anybody, is anybody still writing these steps? I'm good with the steps, but I have one more question on the other side. Okay. If none of your answers check, does that mean the problem doesn't have a solution? That is correct. Okay. If you get, see, there's, it's kind of weird to say, there's a difference between algebra and reality, okay? Algebra gives us all kinds of possible answers, okay? Reality is the answers that actually work out. And so you said correctly, if none of my answers check, then this problem would have no solutions. And that might actually be more of a word problem where we throw away everything. But in our next chapter, we're gonna get all kinds of no solution problems. When we get chapter nine, when we come back from the break, we'll be doing all kinds of types of problems that will have no solution, but for even newer reasons than you ever believed. So oh, fun. Oh yeah. Math is I have a quick question. All right. Um, when you powered the two sides with the three, why did you choose three for the power? Because, because of the, the index. Okay, perfect. So if that was just a cube, um, that is cube, but if it was a square, then we could power by two. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. And Anybody? any, sorry, any linear equation is because it has no power? That's correct. Okay. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but for our purposes, yes, that's correct. Okay. And actually, that's all I'm going to give you this semester. So, yes, it is. All right. Anybody else while I'm still erasing? These are great questions. I, I you know, the one thing I have found, and I don't know if it's because you guys get to hide behind the anonymity of of a monitor screen and I can't see you and whatever, is I do find students in a Zoom lesson, at least for me in math, are much more willing to ask questions than they are in a classroom face-to-face -face setting. Okay, and I really, really enjoy the questions. Okay, I think they add a ton to the class. Maybe you're just really intimidating in person. Okay, I'm five foot, I used to be five foot nine, I'm getting older and shrinking. I'm a touch overweight. I guess my glare and my loud voice looks intimidating, but my granddaughter laughs at me all the time. And I Just like well. a teddy bear. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. And I can't tell you how many stupid jokes my granddaughter has about unicorns of all things. And I got to listen to them all. The unicorns. Oh my God. Okay. She's got me reading a series of books. Uh, somehow she said she heard about this from one of her friends. Um, it's, a, it's a whole series, eight different books by a person. Her name is Shannon Messenger or something like that. Um, it's kind of like Harry Potter light, but it's all about elves and fairies and gnomes and ogres and all kinds of things like that. And no one else in her family will listen to her. And all she wants to do is talk about these books. And by the way, they're not, they're not trivial. I mean, each book is over 500 pages long. Okay. And she's just devouring these things. It's, it's oh, for young she? adults. She's nine. It's for young adults, okay? So it's a little bit over her head too much, but 
Everybody else goes, no, I don't want to read this crap, you know. So I go, all right, I'll read it. So I'm reading these so we can have discussions about unicorns and why unicorn poop is all glittery and all kinds of other fun things like that. Okay, nobody told me that was in the description for being a grandfather. I just <laughs> didn't know. Okay. All right, next problem. <laughs> Negative three. Um, plus quantity x plus one to the one fourth power equals negative six. Okay. Actually, let's stop and let you guys try that now. And I'm just thinking here, all that's going to be recorded forever about unicorn poop. Okay. And it's being closed captioned. Oh, good. I'm in big trouble. Never mind. Okay, let's pause. You guys were. All right, you either have it or you don't. So let's go for it. Um, first thing is um, Carmen was talking about what do you do with a one fourth? And just a few minutes ago, we talked about how the one fourth power is also the fourth root. Okay, so that might be something you would want to do on this problem and see that the one fourth power becomes the fourth root. Now the problem works as normal. So you're going to take three away from both sides. I know, excuse me, you're going to add three to both sides. So we get the fourth root of x plus one equals negative three. Okay, now what power am I going to do? Four. One. Huh? Fourth power. Never. Okay, I, I'm, I'm hearing two people. I heard fourth power, is that right? Because yes. of the fourth index, okay? The index of four, the only thing will cancel that is a four power. Okay, so this cancels out, we get x plus one equals, all right, a little bit of work that turns out to be 81. Okay, negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three is 81. Take away one from both sides, we get x is 80. Now, we need to check that. Okay, so where's my glare? It's there. All right, so I have negative three plus 80 plus one to the one fourth power. Does it equal, question mark, negative six? So I'm plugging 80 into the original problem. So this is negative three plus the fourth root of 81. So negative three, the fourth root of 81 is positive three. So that's negative three and positive three. Do those make negative six? No. So 80 was my only algebra answer. Okay. It didn't check, so I throw it out, and my solution set is actually no solution. Where's the glare? Well, okay, no solution. Or I personally prefer the solution set that is empty, but that's my problem. So 80 was our algebra answer. If I was looking at your work in the exam, I would expect to see this, the fact that you got to 80, okay? And then you correctly interpret it. Whether or not you show me your work for your check, that's your business. I don't care about that at all. But you do need to check it, whether you check it on your paper 
or on your scratch paper or on your calculator. That's strictly up to you. But once you get 80, you need to check it. In this case, it did not check. So our answer was no solution like that. Professor. Okay, so yeah. overall answer is no solution? The overall answer is no solution. Okay. Richard, was that you? Yes. Um, for some reason, my calculator keeps giving me negative three to the fourth power as negative 81. I don't know. Where are you getting negative three to the fourth power? Oh, this one? Yes. Here? Okay. Um, look at the parentheses. Put the negative three in, in parentheses. Because you're raising all of it to the fourth power. Okay, that, that changed it. Okay, Thank you. But, but that's important. We, we've done that a bunch of times. And still, negative three to the fourth power and negative three to the fourth power, those are two totally different answers, even though, e even though if you heard my words, it sounded the same. In the top problem, only three is being raised to the fourth power, and then the answer is being negativized. In the bottom one, the negative and the three are being raised to the fourth power. So they're going to give us different answers. Okay, anybody else? I have one more example that I want to go here and we'll probably grant Mitch's, Mitch's wish. That's hard to say, Mitch's wish. Hmm. Okay, and start a little bit early. Any questions about these? Okay, now this next one, unfortunately to, well, let's do it and see what we get. Can I erase this? Anybody yell at me? Okay. You're good. Okay, example, the square root of 2x minus 5 plus 7 equals x plus 3. All right, I want to walk you through this one because it does get kind of tricky. I want to make sure you go away this weekend with the answer of one of these types of problems at least once done in your notes correctly. So here we go, the square root. So I need to isolate the square root, which means I need to take seven away from both sides. That gives me the square root of 2x minus 5 equals x minus 4. Okay, now I'm going to power both sides, and this is where the first mistake is going to come in. I'm going to power both sides. That side is squared, that side is square. Does everybody understand why I squared both sides? Any questions or clarification on that? Why did okay. you square both sides? Because this was a square root. Remember, the, in the index was an invisible two. And so the index tells you what power to use. Only a square root, excuse me, only a square power will cancel with a square root. But you have to do the same thing to both sides. Now, the left side is easy. This just cancels each other out and we get 2x minus 5. The right side is the first place people are going to make mistakes. They're going to try and listen to Carmen and tell me that this is x squared minus 16, or even plus 16. And I don't know if you guys listened to my comment with Carmen, but you cannot distribute a power over a plus or minus sign. You cannot, okay? If, if this had been x4, then you can distribute a power, 
because they're multiplying together. But because this was x minus four, you cannot distribute that power. That's a fundamental rule. You're never gonna so, let me let that down, huh? No, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> okay? I gotta, if I keep making dumb mistakes, I'm gonna take everybody down with me. So there, okay? No, so the only way to do this is to write it twice and foil that out or use the matrix method or whatever we've been doing the last couple of days. That's the only way to safely do it. Again, many of you can multiply that in your head. It turns out to be 2x squared minus 6x plus 8 if you multiply those. Well, why, question, Professor, why isn't x minus 4 times x minus 4? Because I'm an idiot and I'm too busy trying to make fun of Carmen and I'm not. You got him now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's got, God, and I'm dead. Um, how about minus 8x plus 16? Is that better? <laughs> God, please let the night in quickly. All right, what an idiot. I make a big deal about wanting to do it right. So you guys go off with good notes and I immediately F up. Sigh. I will say I won't forget it now. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Is that what it takes? All right. Question. So, yes. So Save since you. the 2x minus 5 is, um, what's it called, squared, couldn't we just turn that into 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5? It's in the radical. Oh, the, it's late. Sorry. Okay. Well, no, that's, you're okay. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> No, it's in the radical. It was the radical we were trying to cancel out. Okay, that's what the that's what the power did. It canceled out the radical. All right, back down to here because this is a power of two. We need to make it equal to zero. So we're going to take two x away from both sides. So we have x squared minus ten x. Okay, take two x, take two x, add five, add five is plus 21, okay? So now this is where you have to make that determination. What I said was power both sides, solve the new equation, okay? This is a power equation. That means it had to equal zero and we have to factor it. And I can see the 21 isn't showing up very well, but 21, is that any better? No. Anyway, trust me, okay? This will factor as x minus three, x minus seven equals zero. I say, trust me, like, you know, I've made no mistakes ever. Okay, so this, use your AC factoring or whatever your technique is, this factors into x minus three, x minus seven. Solve each one of these x minus 3 equals 0, which means x is 3, or x minus 7 equals 0, which means x is 7, okay? Um, now I got to check these. Let's see. I think the three rejects, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can read my handwriting, but I'm taking the three, plugging it here, two times three is six. So I have six minus five, plus the seven equals three plus three. So six minus five is the square root of one, which is one plus seven, sure as heck does not equal six. So three rejects. Let's try the seven. Okay, if 
If x is seven, I have two times seven is 14. So I have the square root of 14 minus five plus seven. Does it equal seven plus three? 14 take away five is nine, the square root of nine. That makes this three plus seven. Does it equal seven plus three? Yes. So this was okay. This one rejected, this was okay. So for this problem, my only solution is seven, even though one of them rejected. All right, um, I wanna quit now, that's it. You have enough information, you have enough information to uh, finish chapter eight intermediate. Um, I plan on being around, well, I'm going on, I'm gonna be out of town Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, probably Wednesday, but I will answer emails. I think I'll have email access if I can. Uh, Anne, are you going to be around to answer emails or answer anything? Yes, I will be. It's been in my spring break catching up, so I will be here. Okay. Um, are they going to allow you? You can't go into your Zoom room, can you? No, not during the spring break, though, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, they've locked you out of that one. Okay, so you can contact me. You can contact Anne. You can contact each other. Before I turn you loose, I'm sorry, Mitch. Okay, I need to show you guys all something. Okay. Let's go back to here. All right, I am on my Canvas site. Can everybody, is everybody with me? You all see my Canvas site? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, hang on. So I'm going to go to the modules. Come on, wake up. There we go. Collapse, everybody. Um, in Chapter 8, Intermediate, which we just covered, I put videos for the last couple of days up here. I've added videos here that might or might not help you practice these. Okay, notice this one is using fractional powers. Eh, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. But I want to show you something I have. This rules for radicals. Okay, I want to open it up. Come on. Come on. Yay. Okay, there it is. I put together a handout which kind of outlines everything that we've talked about in this chapter. Okay, the, the basic rules, how to, and right here, if you see where I'm, I'm, okay, let me ask this question. Did my worksheet, did my handout, can you guys all see it okay? No. Oh, it's not showing up? No one can see my handout, huh? No. 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 Wait, the rules for radicals? Yeah. That one? Um, yeah. I had to download it, but it, it's... But it's not showing up on my screen? No, the, the, there's like a little window in front of it. Well, crap. Okay, well, forget it. Download it. We'll talk about it next week. But I'll tell you right now that uh, what it what it does is outline everything. Does it show up now? Can you guys see it now? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, actually, I do. Um, it it outlines everything that we've talked about or I've talked about in this chapter. Now, 
it's a good resource to kind of for your notes. It won't help you with practice, but it gives you the basic ideas, the basic way to multiply. Notice I use the for multiplying, I use outside, outside, inside, inside, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we talked last night about division, okay? And I talked about these three major rules, okay? You got to simplify your radicals. You can't have a fraction or decimal inside. You can't have a, a radical in the denominator, okay? So this should help you kind of put all of everything we've learned in this chapter in one place, and then you guys continue to practice it. Um, okay, let me do this. Get out of this. Let's go back. Sorry. This is on your canvas? Yes, it is on canvas. Okay. The other thing, well, that's it. That's good enough for now. I, I want you guys to catch up as much as you can. Uh, I'll probably send out an email um, over the break with some information about the, the test itself, the exam number two. Okay, so with that, now I'm logging into mom. Come on, wake up. Can everybody see mom? Yes. Okay, yes. Anyway. so we're going to intermediate algebra. This is where your quiz, it'll be in the elementary chapter eight. Oops, wake up. Uh, we're going to go into rational expressions, that one down there. Scroll down. This is where you guys should be, should have been doing all your homework. Okay. And we're going to start the quiz in just a few minutes. I'm going to go in and change the settings. But does everyone, everyone know where I am? I mean, where you're going to find this on your own? Yep. Okay. Any, yep. any hesitation? You're going to go into intermediate algebra. You're going to click elementary chapter eight, and then you're going to hit elementary chapter eight again a second time. Okay. Come down here. I'm going to come in and change the settings. Okay. Come on. Wake up. Okay. How much time we have for this quiz? 90 minutes. Okay. okay, 90 minutes. Where to go? I can't find my settings. I'm... Oh, there it is up there, stupid. Oh, sorry, I'm not stupid. So what time is it? It's 34, do you want me to set it at 40? At 7.40 right here, that gives you about four or five minutes. I mean, you don't have to start it now. You can study for an hour and then do it, but you have 90 minutes and you have to get it done before midnight. But if I set it for 7.40 p.m., is that all right with everybody? That gives you about six minutes to get started? Yes. Works for me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Unlimited I'm attempts? I'm sorry? Unlimited attempts? Um, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, know. I don't know. You figure don't just do it right. That's all I can tell you. All right. It's set for six minutes. I will stay on. You can start again. I will stay here. Um, logged into Zoom until about, I'm going to say about an hour, 830. About that. You can log in, ask me questions. Go for it. Have a good quiz. Have a good weekend. Pay attention to due dates for homework and everything, guys. See you. Bye. Have a great Thank break. You Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Anne, there's not much you and I can do. 
So if you want to log out, you're welcome to it. Okay. Okay. Have a great, great break. All right. You too. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, Marissa, can you hear me?